Welcome to Shiv's Habits, week number three, two, seven. All right, who, want, who wants to? Uh, next week's we're going to have to choose something. Oh, is the speaker on on top? Yeah. Um, who are we going to chase around with knives? I vote the same guy we did before. Okay. Probably. Okay. You gonna wear, are you going to wear a turkey costume? Oh, I'm sure I can find something. Okay. Okay. Sweet. Do we, I, I just have a question. Um, do we get real knives this time? <laughs> I see. I don't know, the plastic ones are kind of sharp, so. Okay, all right, so Mike says yes. What about, you're going to be the Indian chasing him with a knife, right? You're married to the Indian, though. Ow, ow, just drop that card. Um, uh, it would just make more sense for you. It would, it would. Okay, all right, all right. So I get the knife. You're going to be the pilgrim, right? Sure. Pilgrims need guns. All right. All right. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. Handguns or rifles? <laughs> Any one you want. What would you prefer? Doesn't matter. Nerf. 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 Choosy nerf. Um, I'm going to have a spear. Why would you have a spear? I just want a spear. I would never give you anything sharp, Walker. Not a caveman. <laughs> but you just think about it. Him with the, something sharp. I know. I'm gonna get hurt. <laughs> He'll get hurt too. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the bone. It's in the bone. <laughs> I can't see. Don't you know? Don't you know? I can't walk. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of that, spears and you arrest. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're just gonna play a scenario out here. Um, so how can I do this? Just risk. We're going to talk about risk. Okay. Because that's kind of the topic, right? Yeah. You know, um, so who, 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 we'll just, we'll do it. So if somebody is a very good driver, is their insurance high or low? Lower. Whoa. Lower. Okay. If somebody, let's say Walker's driving down the road, has low insurance, but you got three daughters coming to drive. You can let your daughters drive. No. Okay. So anyway, so you got. You got um, yeah. Good luck with that. It's movie. almost like you thought about it. <laughs> you didn't even think about it. So anyway, um, so let's say Walker's got low insurance. He's got good insurance. He gets in an accident. What's going to happen to his insurance? It's going to go up or down. Okay. Up. Let's say Walker's driving down the road again, and he's playing with the spirit. He's already got one accident. Um, and he's a little upset because he was at a spear contest and he lost. Okay. And he participating. Yes, that. Okay. And he participating in libations, <laughs> and as a result, was above the legal limit of libations. <laughs> thus, showed more recklessness and got into another accident. Oh. What happens to his insurance? Probably doesn't get it. Well, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <He's probably> <laughs> Now let's just say very very high. Just very high. There you go. All right. So now let's just say um, he decides he's gonna do it again. He continues to pay his high insurance, mm -hmm. and he gets in another accident and shows recklessness. What happens to his insurance? Keeps going up. So what? Just per se, tell me if I'm right or wrong here. That if somebody shows um, uh, not a danger, what's the word I want to use? A risk. Higher, higher, risk. higher risk to society, higher risk. they would pay higher insurance, right? Mm -hmm. Based upon your behavior. crash, your, your behavior. Record. Your track record, your, he would have a permanent higher risk. Because of that, his, let's say, his category of him, mm -hmm. his category would always have that higher risk. Right. And, and, and so, as long as he shows a danger or a challenge to the risk of mankind, mm -hmm. his insurance premiums will be higher. Correct. Somebody like Mike here, who's never been in an accident and has poses minimal to no risk, just mm -hmm. what's his insurance going to be? Very low. No. So we're going to do inductive reasoning here, right? Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Inductive reasoning means that if you pose a lower risk to society. Let's say people go, well, but my, people like Mike tend to be a dangerous driver. That's what they say, <coughs> but they can't prove it. They just say it. Mm -hmm. So, they, but they can't prove that statement. Mm -hmm. But the proof is he's not, no matter what they, they say about Mike's driving, but until they can prove that he's a higher risk, his premiums are always going to be lower, right? Correct. Correct. So no matter what, until you prove that you're a risk 
or a challenge to the safety of mankind, then you're going to have that low one. But if you show that you're a risk or a challenge to mankind, what are your premiums? Such as this category of this person right here. So tell me if I'm wrong here then. The safer you are to humanity, mm -hmm. the less risk you pose to humanity, mm -hmm. what's your insurance premiums? Lower. Right now. The, no matter what the media that would say, yeah. okay, what about if people such as him, mm -hmm. who's always his type of driver, mm -hmm. um, no matter what, until they prove that they're not a risk or a challenge to society, what would people like his premiums be? Well, yeah. as depicted by the expert risk analysis people. Okay, so I would say that the less risk you are in society, you don't pay as much as in premiums. Yeah, very good. That makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just, just we just kind of just play a scenario out there, and you can choose where you wish to take that scenario. I thought that was really pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> what are we going to talk about next? Based upon my driving record and my spear holding. And drinking? Think, yes, and drinking. I think I'm going to take that scenario to prison. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to come visit you. I, yes. Sean might. My wife might. I would. Thank you. <clears throat> would you bring him food? I'll send letters. Mm hmm. Okay. I have a big brownies. You would get brownies. Do you suppose he'd get any of those brownies or we have to share them with his fellow brother in the prison system? <laughs> Let's divert topics. <laughs> <laughs> so in three weeks. What time of year is it again? Three weeks. Yes, three weeks. Talk three about weeks. it. So in three weeks we are having the 29th annual wow. Kocha Chiropractic Food Drive. So you guys... Was it, what year is it? 29th annual? 29th annual. That's Holy what, cow. That's man. what uh, the poster says. That's a lot of food so, drives, isn't it? It's a lot of food though, too. That's I remember our first food drive, I say this every year, I'll never forget our first food drive. Um, and we thought we did something special. We'd been, we were open for like a few months and we collected, what, like 385 pieces of food, which was still great, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But, you know, our, our, we've had two pickup loads, I think is our <laughs> record, which I would love to break, so go. Yes, so during the December 6th, Tuesday, and Wednesday, December 7th, come into Coach Chiropractic, and for 10 non-perishable food items, we will trade you for a very specific chiropractic adjustment. And or, you don't have to, and you can bring more than 10. You can. I mean, I'll never forget, we had one guy, he owned a heating and cooling company here in town, he subsequently retired, but his name was Dick, and I gotta tell you, remember that hunt? He would just, Dick, he would just bring like, Boxes and boxes of food. He pull up, pull up with his van. Yep. And he's like, "Get out here and help me." So I go out there and it just be all kinds of food. It was awesome. So. And for new patients, or your friends and family, or total strangers, or total, total strangers, twenty-five items of non-perishable food, though. please. So we're going to raise a lot, a lot of food, and we look forward to lots of pictures, and we're going to fill this room yep. with items. You know, I, I remember at the old clinic, we filled the back hallway. Um, <laughs> Literally. Wrapped around, kind of went into Mike's room. Yep. Uh, actually did, too, into your big room. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, you know, it was kind of funny just thinking of that, too. Tangent, I'll come back to the food drive. It was like two years ago when this whole thing started here, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Holy cow. Because yeah. that was about yeah, right. Was, was, it, was it on a Tuesday? It was on a Tuesday, but I think it was early in November. When we found this this space, and then they started construction. And it was like the first week of November, and then like two weeks later is when everything yeah. the ball started. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I remember then we were coming over here like every day. I think annoying the yeah. contractors. But we shot a lot of shifts here when it was under construction. We did have a lot of shifts. So, but anyway, so yeah, you know, it's kind of fun. Some of the stuff we did at food drive. I know we've had um, we've had some media coverage. We had some TV coverage. We should do that again. We, I think we were on TV what like three times when we did it. We're on the radio, we had some newspapers, so maybe we ought to push that again because, you know, I, I like the idea that, I see a lot of people that do it, we've done it, it's like 29 years, man. And I, I want to fill this place up again like we did before, mm -hmm. so. Between all of us, we have a couple big big vehicles that we can uh, well, caravan yeah. down. So. i tell you what, I had no, I'd love to rent a truck to have to do it, so. 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 And this will be your last food drive with us, Walker. This, is, this will be your last shift 327 with us. This is the last. <laughs> this will be my last 327. Yeah, I was going to say, technically, this is only everybody. Last 327s. 
the, the last food drive. So what are you going to do next year with the food drive? Should we call it Dolly Lid? Yes, you know, the, the only thing I'm concerned about next year's food drive is the fact that I'll have my own food drive, except for I won't have you guys to remind me that the food is all not to be eaten. It's not yours. Yours. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it, it has to be saved. There's this whole shelf life thing, I, even though did it's you, perishable. Did you have a patient bring turkeys one year? Huh? Like a lot of turkeys? Yes. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. And then you go into my fri freezer at home. Yeah. To bring them down, yeah. Do you still have some of his meat in your refrigerator, freezer? No, it's pretty much all gone. <laughs> did you eat all of his, or did he come get it? He got most of his. Most? Yeah. What happened to what he did get? There may be a couple pieces left, but... There not more. There's a couple of roasts. <laughs> not much. I was wondering why I didn't get the prime fillets. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're out of here. We're out of here. So we'll see you guys. Drive.